Yep, it's on. Greetings to another climb video. Oh, we have got an absolute beaut of a climb today. This climb is called Pim Chair and it's in the Peak District between uh, Macclesfield and Buxton. I mean, just look at the views. It is a corker of a climb. It's quite punchy though, so I'll give you some of the stats very quickly before we get into the video. So it's 1.1 kilometers long, 141 meters elevation gained through the segment, and it's an average of 12.7% with maximum gradients of around 19, 20%. So on the screen, as with all my climbing videos, you'll see my power in the bottom left. We've got the actual course segment on the right. We've got my heart rate. I know you all like looking at the heart rate. Uh, my cadence and the actual grade so yeah this is just a stunning stunning climb this was the second time i'd done it i don't remember the first time really that i did it um so yeah this is, so i kind of had a vague idea of what it was going to be like so a couple of little tips that i will give you if you're going to do this climb or you know any other climb that's new to you go and have a look at the course like elevation i guess online because for me that's so helpful to know where it's going to kick up where the steep bits are if there's any sharp bends and just kind of what to expect i mean you never really know until you're actually on the climb what what it feels like but that gives me a good idea so yeah 12 13 percent already into the climb my heart rate is pretty high and my cadence let's talk about cadence for a minute because cadence is just so important i am love climbing i would say that that's what i'm probably best at and i try and keep my cadence between 80 and 100 it's actually pretty low here but it is 80 19 percent already so if you are trying to improve your times on climbs for me what i find is just trying to get that cadence up and if it means that you need to get lower gear on your bike then do it um so for me i just like i like having the higher cadence i just feel like my legs don't burn as much and you don't get as much like lactic acid build up because you're able to spin and I look so awkward. I mean, look at me there. <laughs> it's so weird, like in my head, how I think I look when I'm climbing is just not the reality. Um, so as you'll see in a minute as well, my hand position. So I, I pro probably like most people, like I will switch between the hoods, the tops, and even sometimes the drops. I know a lot of people are like, you shouldn't be climbing on the drops. It's not a traditional way to climb. But for me, I don't know, I just kind of like it. And I would say that, that if you have a non-traditional way, then just, just go with what feels good for you and your bike setup. Cadence is higher now just because the gradient has dropped. It, got, it was pretty flat, so it was like one, two percent. So just be aware of that. You're just gonna have to ramp up the gears if you wanna keep that power average. So uh, yeah, I'm pushing like 400 there. That is not overall what I would be pushing on this climb. And also another little tip I would give you is make sure you know the segment that you're trying to do and try and get um, live segments on the you know device that you've got just so that you kind of know where the start and end is. There were two different segments. There was one that was started a little bit further back from where I actually started this segment, um, but it included a bit of downhill. So I was like, oh, maybe I won't do that one. But that was a 10 minute climb, which I was, I was, I thought it'd probably take me about 10 minutes. And this one is like six, seven minutes, more like six minutes. So that was my error. I should have kind of picked the segment before I started and I didn't. I kind of went for the longer one first and that's how I'd started pacing it. Whereas really you wanna be pacing it for the amount of time you think it's gonna take. So that's another little thing, just so, you, just so you know, just so you can try and get better. And also as well, if you're gonna try and get the fastest time up a climb, try and keep the, the wattage an average you don't want to have loads of spikes you don't want to be like pushing and surging and then dropping down you want to try and keep it as level as you can and if it is new and it's the first time going up it then maybe just ease into it and then try and push the second half of the climb that's what i generally do with climbs i don't know because there's nothing worse and i've done this before you kind of start out really hard and then you realize oh yeah there's like a 20 percent gradient like three quarters of the way up that i didn't realize was there so I do like doing a little bit of prep before just so I know what is going to come on the climb. But look at that view. It's just, oh, it's just so beautiful, this this this, pl this climb, this place. Anywhere in the peaks, I just, I'm in love with. So let me know if you've actually done this climb before because it is just a really popular one, um, especially people from like Manchester area to go and do. But yeah, I've just not done it that much. I generally go north and this is south um, for me, but you i cannot wait to get out and do some more um climbs like this in summer and just get those shorts on short sleeves um but yeah you can see that i'm i want to say struggling but i'm pushing i'm pushing pretty hard 
And so, yeah, we're ramping up to 14%, 15%. And I'm just like looking ahead because I'm like, come on, the top. It's got to be there. And you can see actually on the course profile there that the, 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 end, the end is in sight. And then I think it's going to ramp up. I think this is where it gets up to like 18%, 19%. Oh, look at that view. I just, this, this is exactly why I climb. And like, I, I'm not a, flan, a fan, sorry, of flat rides. I like hilly rides because I like the views that you get. Let me know if you prefer flat rides or hills. All about the hills. Sorry, I think I just wiped my nose on my arm there, on my sleeve. <laughs> I said it before, but I always get like a little uh, drippy nose when I'm climbing. Because I'm pushing, I am pushing pretty much as hard as I can. So I'll tell you the overall stats for, for my effort on this. Um, I did it in 6 minutes 46 with an average of 303 watts. My average heart rate was 181 and my average cadence was 84. So yeah, if you've done it, you can compare times. I would like to go back and do it again. Uh, we'd actually just done Blaze Hill before this, and I actually think Blaze is harder than this one, more difficult, because um, it's longer. I mean, this one's only like just, just over a kilometre long, so it's not too, not too long to be able to push out. And then we are heading up now, pretty much to the end, end of the segment. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, and let, yeah, let, like I say, let me know if you've done it, and I'll see you next video. The end is just about there, I think. That was so much fun. That was felt easier than I thought it was gonna do. I think after doing Blaze, I was like, oh my God, my legs are not ready for this. That's Pim's chair. I'll leave all the link to it in the description.